Hello tangerines from somewhere in Mexico. And welcome to our second ever edition of 10 Minute Tangerine Travels Tuesdays where we're releasing a shorter video than our typical Saturday vlog. Today we are going to be sharing the 11 things we hate most about living in Mexico. Don't get us wrong, there's a ton of things that we love, but these are the things that are not so great after three years of the, being in this country. One thing I hate about living in Mexico is the way trash is dealt with. In most places, there aren't really dumpsters. In most cities, you're gonna probably put your trash out on the street, but in the meantime, all the street dogs are gonna tear open the bags. Wind blows it around everywhere, and it, there's garbage juices that leak out onto the street and then make stuff smell horrible. Sometimes the custom is to just leave your bags in the actual middle of an intersection, and then the, the trash men come and pick it up eventually. But this is kind of a huge culture shock compared to where we lived in the US. The next thing we don't like about living in Mexico is how slow and unreliable the internet can be. This is generally more so the case for smaller cities and little pueblitos, especially mm -hmm. cities and towns that aren't really on the map per se. The bigger the city, the less of a problem this is, but for people like us who do all of our work online, um, I mean, you, you're watching this video right now, we need like good upload speeds to get a video like this up. It's not to say we can't get it, like we were living in Puerto Morelos, which is a small town, and we were able to get fiber optic there, so we had 100 up, 100 down, something like that. That. Yeah, but especially when we're traveling around the country and going from Airbnb or hotel to hotel, it's really unpredictable what the internet speeds are and when we're going to get decent enough ones to be able to work. So like I said, huge pain point, it's ongoing and there's nothing really we can do about it. The next thing that really sucks about living in Mexico is the corruption. To give you one example, we we're going through the process of renewing our temporary residency in order to get that process done quicker with Cancun INS. M, they said we can pay 1200 US dollars to go to the top of the pile. We neither had the money nor wanted to cooperate with that type of corrupt uh, those, the bribery, yeah, we didn't want to go through with that. So instead, it took almost a year, a full year, for that temporary residency to be renewed. We also found out later that our lawyer, who was also in on all this, by the way, asked for our bank statements, even though she didn't need them at all, just so she knew how much money we had in the bank. Totally, totally corrupt and immoral and horrible. I hate that that's a part of Mexican society and I know Mexicans hate that as well. Another subcategory of this corruption uh, topic is cartels and cartel activity, which I hope it's going to be obvious why we're not going to get into the nitty gritty of that. One thing that really tugs at our heartstrings in Mexico is the mistreatment of animals. For example, we'll see a lot of really skinny street dogs and in many cities, there's a lot of dogs that are left on the roof for their entire life. They don't yeah. get any socialization, nobody to play with. And just today we saw some evil human try to run a dog over in the street. He swerved his car towards the dog to try to hit the dog. People in, in Mexico, they just don't see animals. They don't see dogs, especially the way that they do in the US. Like people in the US treat them like they're a member of the family. And that's totally just not the culture, or at least for the most part, it's not the culture here in Mexico. Another thing on the street dogs thing though, we have Laska, that's our husky. Mm -hmm. And so with there being sometimes a lot of street dogs just running around loose, they can sometimes be aggressive, which is dangerous for us to be walking around with Laska and just kind of scary. Honestly though, 99% of the time they're not aggressive. But However, it's just a, you, you- It's a not knowing. You never know, that's yeah, a thing. Yeah, it's it just, I hate to see that dogs are mistreated or not fed. We do understand that when it comes down to it, if a family doesn't have enough money or food to feed their family, they're obviously not gonna feed a pet, but it doesn't make it any less heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. Something we can't stand in Mexico are these giant glorietas. A glorieta is a roundabout, and roundabouts are easy when they're one or two lanes wide. They're super easy to navigate and traffic flows nicely. But then you have these big cities, like there's one in Mexico City around Angel de la Independencia, that's, I don't know, six, seven lanes wide? It's <laughs> enormous and it's a total disaster. I have no idea what to do when we get into a roundabout like that. The next thing that is a real bummer about living in Mexico is how ungodly expensive it is for us to have a foreign plated car here. And yes, I realized that we could buy a Mexican car and that would save us a lot of costs, but it was my car, we had it, and that's just, that's just how things played out for us. It's also one of the reasons why we get stopped at checkpoints so 
so mm -hmm. many times and pulled over by the police so many times wanting to see our papers. They've always been pretty innocent stops, but yeah, it's annoying. It, it's a drag, yeah, of course, getting pulled over when we're not speeding, we didn't go through a stop sign or anything like that. So it's, it's just one of those things that as long as we have a foreign plated car, particularly a tangerine, <laughs> bright as tangerine foreign plated <laughs> car, we're gonna be dealing with that. We're gonna be paying double for insurance, one insurance here in Mexico, one in the US. Tags in the US. Tags in the US. The fees to get the permit to have the car here. Now, I have a feeling we're not gonna have a foreign plated car here much longer. No, especially not after those Catemaco roads. Oof, we do, we really need a four wheel drive car. If you'd like to see more videos like this about our life and travels through Mexico, please subscribe to our channel. One thing I cannot stand in a lot of cities across Mexico, I'll love almost everything else about the city, but then their bus fleet, their public transportation it is really old and super polluting. You're walking down the street and your lungs are filling with smoke, it's just awful. Yeah, you just choke on the exhaust. In many of our earlier videos, we would be recording and then a loud bus would go by. I'd be like, buses! <laughs> that leads us into our next one, and that is noise pollution. Yes, another thing that's very noisy, motorcycles! But also the culture in Mexico, it's a pretty noisy culture. Often people bringing a big boom box out with mm -hmm. loud music playing, playing music from their house, having parties all the time. Roosters, the street vendors, we gotta love them, but sometimes they're so loud and it's inopportune when they're blaring their speakers or like Zeta, 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 guess, those type of ones. Mm -hmm. And then everyone has a dog for home security too, so you, you have dogs barking all night, roosters cockadoodle doing all night. <laughs> I wish they would cockadoodle don't. <laughs> Likewise, but all the general noise, it's something that I've not gotten used to. A lot of these things that we're talking about today don't apply everywhere in Mexico, but this next one does. Everywhere in Mexico, I despise the topes. Topes, <laughs> that's just what we used to how we used to pronounce the word for speed bumps when we first started traveling in Mexico. But yeah, I loathe these speed bumps, which are unregulated, often they're unmarked, and even when you're going over some of them at a crawl, you will bottom out, you'll scrape the hell out of the underside of the car. Keep in mind, yes, we do have a car, but it has much higher clearance than a lot of cars, than the average car that's in Mexico. Mm -hmm. I remember one time, I believe this was in Zacatecas, we were going off the freeway, an off-ramp from the freeway, and there was a gigantic unmarked speed bump. So, so we, we were going at highway that speeds. So hard. It was like, oh my gosh, and we didn't even know what happened at first. It was like, what the hell? I uh, think this is something I will always hate about Mexico. Mm -hmm. Another thing we really don't like about living and traveling through Mexico is the sometimes horrible road conditions where there's, for instance, unavoidable giant potholes, or like recently we were driving through the state of Tabasco, which is almost completely flooded right now, and we drove through like, I don't know, three, four feet of water for like a mile. Three or four feet, Betty? Did, did you see water up to the windows? Okay, how deep do you think it was? I think the deepest part was maybe a little over a foot, but it was it did go on for a, a literal mile. Okay, we'll compromise at two feet and that's my final offer. <laughs> I'm still shuddering to know what type of damage it did to our poor Prius. Uh, we gotta take it to the car doctor to find out <laughs> soon. But man oh man, it can be difficult to drive in Mexico sometimes. Before we get to number 11, we wanted to let you know that at the exact same time we posted this video, we also released another one, the exact opposite, 11 reasons why we love living in Mexico. So after you're done watching this one, we hope you will click over and watch that one, but let's get to number 11. One thing that has been a constant frustration throughout our almost three years in Mexico, finding things that we need to purchase. Yeah, whether that's buying them online or looking for a physical store to get the product. I'm very used to like Amazon two-day shipping and searching for the thing that I need online and then even being able to find where the store is located. That doesn't seem to be the case in Mexico or maybe we're just not doing it right, but like you said, it's really frustrating when we're looking for a specific thing, trying to find what store has that or what vendor mm -hmm. or, or just not being able to find it at all because maybe it doesn't even exist in Mexico. <laughs> just a reminder, on the end screen here in just a moment, we are going to link that video, the 11th things we love about living in Mexico, so go check that out. And please subscribe to our channel if you want to see more videos we release about our life in Mexico and travels across the country. But one more thing, hold on. <laughs> Gong that bell so you will be notified whenever we release a Tangerine Travels 10 Minute Tuesday video or Saturday video. And we will see you there. 